Hello everyone, welcome to our Egyptian online seminar group. First, keep your phones off. Then, if you have any questions, you can ask our speaker during his presentation or after his presentation. I have great pleasure of welcoming dear Professor Jung Ho. Jung Ho is an assistant professor of accounting at Stanford University. He completed his PhD at the University of Chicago. His research interests are in the intersection of accounting and labor economics. His research has been published in top ranking journals such as the Journal of Accounting Research and the Journal of Financial Markets. And now we will start our seminar with uh, dear Professor Jean Co. Thank you, Mohamed, for um, this introduction and really inviting me to this uh, amazing seminar. I believe actually you uh, organized this seminar for a while, more than 100, as you mentioned. It's kind of really amazing and exciting. Just first, actually, share my slide. Okay, and then um, changing the participant mode. So um, I'm really excited to present this paper. We are actually revising right now this paper, Shwela. So any comment would be welcome. And I really appreciate all of you right now here to listen to this uh, presentation and also interact with me about um, the paper. So the title of the paper is not just for investors, the role of earnings announcement in guiding job seekers, and this is a joint work with Bongun Choi at Fount Inc. as a chief economist, and also Sarah Malik at University of Utah. By the way, just like I make sure that um, the format of this presentation, I believe some of the choice. So I'm actually happy to kind of um, ask answering any question during the presentation. Please therefore jump on. And also, you can use the uh, raising a hand function in the participant chat a participant or window, or actually you can also write down the um, question in the chat. I believe Mohammed will uh, monitor the chat and I'm going to actually immediately answer some question. If you raise your hand, I'm also actually take a look at the participant window as well. By the way, um, you know, here at least like uh, we almost fully came back to the in-person teaching. So although actually I really, I was really familiar with the remote teaching for a while. Now I'm still, but well, somehow actually I moved to the uh, the in-person teaching, hope that actually I, uh, my body is still remember well about the uh, remote teaching I just done probably a year ago. So let's actually start how I motivated this research question. So the importance of human capital for firms has significantly increased since, I mean, maybe like a couple of decades ago and recently as well. And it's really easy to find some of the discussion around this labor issue recently, such as labor shortage or social issues related to labor. On the other hand, when you actually take a look at the academic literature, I at least perceive that the evidence about the role of financial information in the job market is relatively absent. And there we are asking this specific research question that is what role really do earnings announcement play in the job search process? And also if there are, how really do earnings announcement influence job seekers decision-making? So before starting into the details, let's actually think about, do we have even any anecdotal evidence about financial information really matter for job seekers? And if I actually try to search for some of the articles on the internet, especially about a career advice, it's not also difficult to find some of the articles, such as the title is why job seekers should read annual report. However, if we want to really understand why they really care about financial information or earnings announcement, it would be good for us to think about first job seekers problem. And I believe many of us here and including me at some point or even more than one time being in this shoe of job seekers. So survey evidence actually indicate that job seekers care about future job prospects such as future job opportunities, professional development, career growth, and high future salaries. And then if you think about job seekers really care about this and then try to understand and find the job, next job they want to actually apply for or interest in applying in the future, this job search process is not costly. In other words, there is opportunity cost such a way that if he wants to get this information or understanding better about employer that you're interested in, job seekers sometimes have to sacrifice their leisure where they have to put more effort 
in these activities. Also, job search can be costly in a sense that if we focus on one firm and try to dig into those firms, building a network with a workers working at that firm, we might lose an opportunity to searching for another company that might be also very promising. Therefore, at the beginning of the job search process, understanding about the firm's job prospect seems to be important as well as it seems to be a information or problem. That is why we can think about a role of earnings announcement in this context. In other words, we can think about earnings announcement or information contents in the earnings announcement can be perceived by the job seekers and help them to identify promising a employer which have also future brighter job prospects. In other words, financial information can be a signal to identify smaller set of more promising employers which can give job seekers higher return of their job search activity and therefore that lead to job search initiation. Before getting into any hypothesis, I want to make sure a few things. First of all, as an accounting researcher, I'm highly interested in the role of earnings announcement. But that doesn't mean that earnings announcement is the only source of information for validating or identifying promising job um, opportunities. I believe that just earnings announcement can be a one important source of information. However, at the same time, there are many other sources of information. Job seekers can perceive and then narrow down their set of employers. And under that um, um, understanding, let's actually go to two hypotheses under this job prospect uh, hypothesis. So the first hypothesis based on uh, this job prospect hypothesis is that earnings announcement therefore might be associated with a increase in job searches because it can provide some information content which is useful for job seekers. And also job seekers probably search for firm with a strong earnings announcement more than for firms with weak earnings announcement because strong earnings announcement firms might have much larger job work, much brighter job prospect in the future. In terms of like in the context, you can also imagine that um, sometimes job employers post job, not highly interested in hiring firm. Sometimes they just want to take a look at what our job candidate looks like in the job market so that getting the information which help them to understand what firms are serious about hiring the job could be very useful. Emma, you raise your hand. Hi, um, very nice meeting you. I'm a PhD student from the University of Toronto. I really like this research topic that you're presenting today. I just have a simple question here. So you focus on earnings announcement. Um, however, I wonder, do you focus on the earnings number per se, or do you focus on, I, I, I think in general, you're focusing on the the, the positive signal sent by companies that they're expanding in the future. So they probably need more labor in the future. So if you look at companies' uh, earnings conference calls, for example, they might discuss that they're expanding their labor force, they're, they're, they're gonna hire in certain areas, and that could also lead to higher job search or more successful job match in those particular areas. I wonder if there's any way you can take advantage of those transcripts and um, add more you know, cross-sectional tests here, even within the strong earnings announcement companies, could there be a differentiation given the signal that they sent in their public uh, announcements? This is actually a really good point, Emma. Thank you for your question. I actually slightly moving to the next slide and then think about like in the context of the research design, and also like uh, going back to Emma's question. So what we are doing in this research um, question, we are actually using or following the prior literature, including Beaver 1968, learnings on awesome as an event, and then take a look at the job search volume before and after, especially during the earnings announcement period. And also we want to actually a little bit, therefore, um, the credit 
the information context of earnings announcement as your source for some um, changes around the earnings announcement of the job seekers. But let's actually go back to uh, Emma's point that's actually really uh, important. That is, although we actually try to more thinking about all these things, uh, the contents in the earnings announcement, more like financial number, we're not able to directly tie to that or actually we are not able to exclude any other information usually coming out during the earnings announcement first. So that we have to have to admit that what we say actually earnings announcement financial information, that's not only actually tied to the one number, so something like earnings, maybe overall contents that um, the job seekers receiving seems to be uh, kind of affecting our result. And we also right now just generally interested in all those um, pieces of information because as a like a, not many studies out there yet actually really studying this event. So that we first want to think about earnings announcement overall as a one event. And by the way, and also try to think about what mechanism through which actually earnings wants to influence it. Now let's a little bit go deeper that actually Emma's question, although I actually mentioned that we are not able to disentangle probably on right now the test that we are doing, we are highly interested in to go further like a following Emma's question. In other words, definitely some AK announcement, something like building a new factory, we believe that that also will affect the decision of the job seeker. Could be also very interesting uh, information for job seekers care about. But the reason why we want to focus on your earnings announcement is that this seems to be one of the most, not the, the most, at least one of the most salient financial reporting events. So then let's actually start from there. And definitely we want to expand our knowledge further to other direction as uh, Emma, you actually pointed out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And Grupal, you actually had a question or? Sure, and um, might, might make some sense after we go through this, but I was thinking along the lines of, I think the further away you get from the earnings announcement and start thinking about these kind of the flip side of Emma's point, right? If there's a lot of economic events having to do with firm quality and prospective wages that drives the earnings announcement being really good. And those are the things that are actually attracting and directing job search rather than the earnings announcement itself. Um, that starts sounding, I think, a little bit more similar to like experimental management literature, right? Or labor economics literature that in some of these smaller sample types of surveys, you know, they find some evidence that signals of firm quality do lead to like higher prospects of like wanting to apply to a job. So I think it is good that you're focusing on the earnings announcement. Uh, and then on the flip side, where I'm sure some of this, once we get through the research design, may be worth revisiting. I think separating out the earnings announcement is, is going to kind of be the identification challenge a little bit, trying to find two really similar economic situations where one firm's making an earnings announcement and the other one isn't. Um, but but I'm sure you'll you'll take plenty of steps to try to really isolate that. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Like group out, like a maybe a, a slightly delaying one actually part of the, your really nice point is that how we can actually tie this to the really financial information. And in our, our archiver setting, actually we have to admit that some degree we are not able to really isolate that. So that's why actually in this slide also we can slightly see the hint that when you actually go to the uh, the third. A section in additional support for job prospect hypothesis, we had to do some additional analysis. But like the group are also one step back, maybe right now, one of the goal we really want to achieve here is definitely we want to actually ask more like a detailed analysis of how exactly why question. But at first, we also want to somewhat actually uh, provide some concrete evidence whether question, at least we can find the strong association between the job search activities and earnings announcement, because at least to our knowledge, the prior literature didn't really establish that yet. And maybe this is also a good segment to the, go to the prior literature. So as actually group I mentioned, and also uh, many of you here probably already perceived that we are not the first person or first research team saying about the role of uh, the, the uh, financial information in the labor market. Actually, Group R, you're asking me a question. You also contribute this literature uh, already a lot. So I think actually this is a, not the completely new idea. Even actually go back to Rivert and Zimmerman in 1986, they actually suggesting that a some accounting choices actually perceiving the um, union wage negotiation. Therefore, they sometimes drive down the earning to actually get the better wage negotiation with union. However, our understanding is that although there are some literature perceiving the importance of accounting in the labor market, we didn't find any strong empirical evidence really about the direct test between the earnings announcement or financial event 
and also job search activity with the large sample. So that's actually where we are uh, contributing. And then go deeper as actually, as Emma pointed out, or Grupa pointed out, understanding how and why, and more actually kind of detailed analysis, maybe like based on the text. That's definitely we want to do further. But the first thing we want to actually establish is that weather question. And by the way, it is worth mentioning that also Ed Dehan's paper, Ed, Nan, and Frank also wrote really nice paper complement to our paper. In this paper, we really focused on the job seekers or potential employees. Their paper also focused on current employees. And just in case, yeah, um, yeah, that's about it. And let's move on to the research setting. So if you have a question. Okay, what research setting we are using? We are using earnings announcement as a setting. Already Emma actually asked a question, but this is also a good actually place. I just summarizing why we actually choose earnings announcement as a research setting. One of the reason is that we believe that earnings announcement is actually one of the salient event and especially discrete and tiny summary of firm financial performance. Also, we definitely acknowledge that during the earnings announcement, firms actually communicating multiple things of the very important event of earnings announcement. However, if you also take a look at the um, media coverage of the earnings announcement, still the revenue, uh, EBITDA or earnings are the salient portion of that earnings announcement. And definitely also the context might be uh, very important. Going back to Grupa's point, I actually completely agree with uh, Grupa that although we are actually starting from the earnings announcement, maybe still in the middle, what they really care about is job seekers prospect, like how likely I'm going to get a job here, what is actually my performance looks, uh, my actually compensation looks like, what is probability for me to go up the ladder of the corporation. So all those things we actually thinking that probably of earnings announcement or financial performance can be a signal for one of the signal for those uh, prospects. By the way, also this uh, point, because we had a really nice discussion about that, maybe I want to a little bit tie this discussion to the um, the prior paper we actually built on Bowen et al. 2000, uh, 1995. In the Bowen's paper, one of the nice thing about their earnings in terms of signaling this kind of um, the compensation, especially future compensation or future promotion probability is this implicit contract. In other words, high performance of the firm probably naturally indicate that these firms are going to expand their businesses, therefore more likely to also hire more workers in the future, instead of we just gobbling through the word or cheap up that not actually hard to be verifiable. So one of the benefits of financial performance is that still through that channel can actually signal that this firm is serious about hiring or maybe promoting the workers in the future. So the other side of the important uh, research design choice is we are using this team blind data. So uh, those of you probably not uh, familiar with the, this team blind data, let's actually take a look at uh, their website. First of all, team blind is a online anonymous professional network where users can openly discuss various job market issues across employer and industry. This is kind of job board, but more like a community. You actually share a lot of information here. One of the actually distinctive part of this um, website is that as you can see, it is anonymous professional network uh, based on my description. So users more freely share some sensitive information such as offer, interview question, or sometimes even compensation. So I actually just like copy and paste the typical days of line, the first page. And as you can see, one of the top, or actually uh, now all posts, you can see seven on-site, seven offers. So many of the discussion they are doing on this website is really about the job market, such as offer or salary and other things. If I re-emphasize one more time, really what they are talking about, what they are interested in, so our measure of the job search is the term they actually type in the search bar here in uh, blind, and you can see in the middle on the top, this search bar. And usually users search some company name and also some other core search term. When we take a look at the top 10 core search term, we can actually get some sense of what they are interested in from the company, salary, offer, total compensation, we can imagine this is more related to the future compensation. On the other hand, when you take a look at the, the top, uh, the fourth um, top 
so closer to the interview, probably they are more interested in what kind of interview questions um, they are likely to get, or actually how hard or easy the interview looks like. And also, if you I'll take a look at the, the top fifths and then let's say top tens, like a manager or a director, you can imagine this is also related to the some probably to the to be a promoted to the manager or director, or how likely they are actually hiring the manager or director. So all these things uh, to our um, to to us actually indicate that maybe this search term are really related to their more interest in job prospect, getting more information about them after they hear or get some sense of those uh, employers through earnings announcement or the event. And one thing also emphasizing that we are not actually suggesting that the job seekers really pay attention to um, the earnings announcement every day. That probably I'm not actually doing that as well. But when I actually just uh, think about my typical day, I also just like a read the Wall Street Journal or just like a look at the LinkedIn or some social media. I actually naturally exposed to the uh, important event on that day, something like earnings announcement or actually some event firms actually announcing so that I believe that media or social media overall play an important role. At the same time, I also actually have a friends are working in the Bay Area so that word of mouth might be another reason I hear about the company and that perceive the earnings announcement, just like I didn't emphasize at the beginning, but the uh, process through which uh, the job seekers aware of this event, I believe that there are multiple channels that we also we don't really limit to one of those channels. We're more like open to probably through the multiple channels job seekers can perceive this event. So just like one more, I also just type the uh, hiring and snap, what kind of like a search outcome really coming out. And then uh, as you can see, these are the just like naturally I search for it and this uh, coming out like a snap hiring bar, hiring and snap or snap you hire equity pricing formula. As you can see, based on this uh, search outcome, you know, the um, discussion or the search is really about the job uh, market related uh, event, which is they're really interested in either they want to work for this firm, how likely they can work or what kind of package if they work for those firms they are likely to get. Okay, so again, also let's actually take a look at because this is a new data set, it would be actually good to first understanding um, the team blind users or the team blind itself, the application, the data set we are using. So probably I believe many of our uh, users here, more familiar with, let's say, Indeed or Glassdoor. By the way, the Glassdoor is the blue um, line on this screen. And then I actually did the Google trend analysis relative to you know, um, Glassdoor and Indeed, what is the uh, Google traffic of line? Although it's actually kind of lower than the blue or yellow, if you actually really uh, kind of take a look at uh, recent years, like uh, later 2020, also all the 2021, still relative to Glassdoor, the traffic is almost like 10 or 20% of Glassdoor, at least in the Bay Area. So that we can actually see that um, this activity is not actually visible, uh, you know, very minor relative to Glassdoor, at least there is a meaningful um, traffic is going on so that based on this, we can understand job seekers decision or activities. And in terms of the top 10 employers or team blind users employers, you can see uh, familiar names such as Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. However, we also make sure that when you actually go to the sample, we have 513 companies in our sample. And when we do the industry competition analysis relative to the CompuStat, we actually find quite similar uh, industry composition, although some of the uh, heavy users uh, working for some tech and finance industries. Okay, before getting into the data or research design, I want to actually share one anecdotal evidence, SNAP Inc. So around 2020, the third quarter, actually SNAP um, showed really strong earnings announcement. For example, if you look at the summary of the Wall Street Journal uh, article around that uh, period, revenue increased 52% year over year to 679 million. And also in that quarter, they also achieved the positive adjusted EBITDA 56 million in quarter three 2020 compared to the actually negative adjusted EBITDA 42 million in the prior year. And then actually when the uh, app, this platform acknowledged that there is a huge uptick of SNAP and that is 292% relative to the normal activity and that is coincided with a this 
um, positive earnings announcement, this is also one good anecdotal evidence. Think about this context. By the way, because we have the media coverage here, I also want to actually talk about a little bit that it is possible that some job seekers might not immediately perceiving what is exactly earnings or operating cash flows or EBITDA, but still maybe revenue increasing positive seems to be also much easier way than to get the sense of the firms are in the right track or more likely to expand their businesses so that um, media coverage seems to be also helpful for the job seekers really perceiving the information content. In other words, we also assume that sometimes job seekers might not directly perceive every information by themselves or process them, more they get some help from the friends or just perceiving the tone. Grupa? Yeah, this is a really nice anecdote. And it I'm not sure you do it in the paper, but um, what could be useful is to think about like, to benchmark this like 292%, it would be interesting to do some kind of almost placebo type analyses, like other firm events that have nothing to do maybe with earnings or revenue or operating cash flow that elicit still a lot of media coverage. Um, what kind of increase in search volume on blind does that elicit, right? Because I think what that would help with, it would provide kind of a benchmark for just generally drawing attention to a firm for like, any reason is probably going to lead to some search behavior of that firm as well. And it, it might be like kind of a clever way to be like, oh, you know, there's kind of this, there's still an incremental difference when it is financial information versus other equally maybe important, but not financial information related uh, press events that are really covered by the press. Uh, just an idea. I'm not sure if it, if it would fit well in, in the setting. No, I, I really like your, 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 your suggestion. And by the way, we actually have the one test related to that. Let's actually go when you actually cover, I want to actually go back to group part, your, your question. Probably we did something, but probably not actually yet enough. So any actually additional kind of direction you can give us, I'm actually happy to kind of explore. I'm excited, like as you, probably you do as well, like in this area so that I want to actually understand better. And for that, and actually I really appreciate, let's actually see later the specific test. And then from there, um, discuss more what we can actually do and then understand better about like what media really play the role there. Okay, um, let's move on so far. Yes, any question? Great, then let's actually get into the data and research design. So <clears throat> we are going to use the data as I described the job search and specifically we are using this scale search as a dependent variable. We are uh, constructing this scale search in a similar manner as Bieber 1968 really constructed scale volume, such a way that we are actually using the job search volume that is a uh, per user per week, whether they search for a specific company, if they search for the specific company in the search bar, then we actually quote it as one, and then we actually aggregate them up across all the user base. By the way, in the sample, as you can see, we are using about half million users in the US. And also uh, the number of employers of those users are about 513 public companies. And the sample period is from 2018 to 2021. When, we, when I say the scaling, our denominator is the number of users for that specific firm on the website. So that we believe that like using all the search uh, activities and also user base uh, in the same um, website really have the uh, kind of the same common denominator and numerator uh, scaling. And then in the right-hand side of this regression specification, we are going to use a indicator variable for each week from all the way to the four weeks before the earnings announcement and then all the way to the uh, four weeks after earnings announcement. And we are going to use two important fixed effects, that is year week fixed effect and also year firm interactive fixed effect, try to take care of any expansion of the user base or some like a, a macro event, as well as any firm specific event in the year. So that we really take a look at the earnings announcement week relative to the other week. Okay, um, that's our design. And this is um, time to also look at some descriptive statistics before the uh, looking at the main reserve. So I already kind of introduced number of users. Let's actually take a look at searches per user, especially um, the median that is about 172 searches 
per user, that means that given that we are covering about like two and a half years in the sample, this is about 1.3 searches per week per user and seems to be also reasonable, um, just like uh, at a first glance. And also when we take a look at this 513 companies that we are uh, dealing with um, in terms of their size and the market book, relative to the average computer firm, the, our sample firms are slightly larger and also it seems to be high market to book or high growth firm. In the analysis, as I mentioned already, we are choosing the scale search as our main variable. However, also we use a log search plus one as our alternative measure for search activities. One of the reason we choose a scale search as our main variable is that if you look at the correlation table, scale search is less correlated with a form characteristic, seems to be therefore less vulnerable to omitted variable problem. However, we also want to make sure that when we use the log uh, searches plus one, we at least use a firm year interactive fixed effect. Therefore, this correlation is much lower when after using the firm year fixed effect so that we also use log searches plus one as a alternative specification to uh, understand the robustness of our research. Okay, now it's good time to take a look at the uh, first main reserve. So um, in the graph, as you can see from the week, four weeks before the earnings announcement all the way to one week before the earnings announcement, we find statistically non-significant different from zero search activities. However, during the earnings announcement, we see a spike or jump in the search activities and then it tapers down gradually from uh, in week one and week two and then from week three, it's also quite um, you know, significant indifferent from zero. So in this uh, figure, I want to actually point out a few things. First of all, this magnitude we see in week zero relative to the mean scale search, it is about 6% increase in job searches. And in terms of the absolute uh, change, as you can see in the horizontal bar, it's about 2%. So let's actually put this 2% in the economic context. So in general for firms, including the temp, uh, temp workers, the every quarter employee turnover is about 9%. So we believe that this 2% magnitude seems to be quite economically significant. Another interesting point is that also relative to the like a fish and capital market, in this case, we actually see more like a tapering instead of like spiking up and going down. One of the reason is that when you think about the uh, capital market trading, you can actually do trade almost instantaneously or within a second. But when you think about the job search, actually, if you think about this is the initiation of the job search, on average, based on the uh, Glassdoor data, job search takes about three to five months from the application all the way to get a job and then move to another job. In that sense, one of the response, slow response can be viewed as they actually slowly start to uh, take a look at these companies and that actually um, somewhat incorporated into this um, week, one week after the earnings announcement as well as two weeks after the earnings announcement. And all this reserve from our perspective is consistent with hypothesis one, that is earnings announcement are associated with an increase in job searches. So we actually turn this reserve into the regression uh, format and the same reserve, we actually just like a draw that um, graph based on more like a dense, the indicator variable. When we actually only look at the two indicator variable earnings announcement week zero or earnings announcement from week zero to all the way to uh, week four, as you can see, regardless of which variable we're using, either scale searches or log searches plus one, we find a consistent reserve, although column two is statistically significant, the magnitude is still meaningful. Now let's take a look at the uh, another figures more related to the hypothesis two, whether job seekers actually search more for firms with earnings announcement that is larger than the median or earnings announcement, uh, the earnings announcement with earnings growth, which is larger than the median earnings growth. 
and lower than the median uh, earnings growth. When you actually take a look at the left figure for, um, for firms with earnings growth higher than the median, we find a significant effect actually larger than the previous figure by actually splitting this sample larger than 2%. And then we actually see the persistent effect from week zero all the way to week two, and then it tapered down to uh, close to zero. On the other hand, when we actually take a look at right-hand side figure, where now we focus on firms with earnings growth, rolled at the median, we didn't find any salient effect around earnings announcement. And this finding is really consistent with uh, our hypothesis too, where job seekers actually search for firms with strong earnings announcement more than they search for firms with earn weak earnings announcement. And this is also consistent with the argument that earnings announcement really provides some information content that is useful for job seekers. Emma, do you have a question? Yeah, um, this is very interesting. I wonder how much of this is expected versus a surprise. So if you look at um, the expected earnings uh, with, res uh, with respect to the actual, like, and take a sample cut by that measure, like how would, would this be more uh, pronounced in the, in the sample that has higher unexpected uh, earnings? And also um, from... Until now, you seem to be talking about the supply side, the laborers seeking for jobs. I wonder if the companies know that with a good earnings report, um, that there will be more interest from the labor market. Do they take advantage of that, right? Do they have more postings? I don't know if you have posting data. Um, it will be interesting to see if companies who want to hire more labor force in the future uh, actually post more um, after they know that they have a good earnings report. Emma, thank you. Like, uh, if I understand correctly, you have... Um two questions could you, I, I actually could you actually elaborate what first question first like yeah so time. the so first one is unexpected is, earnings right okay. or actual versus expected by analysts okay. and yeah. earnings surprise and yeah. the second one is uh, what companies do to take advantage of the increased interest with the positive earnings shock okay thank you very much for uh, elaborating one more time so both are actually really good question um, actually, related to your second question, we have some tests later and some consistency you, you will find so that uh, if you actually uh, wait, I can actually delay a little bit. And then when you go to that section, we can actually elaborate it, um, the, what we did and then how actually it is consistent with your, your, your expectation. So here, however, I want to actually talk a little bit about your first point that is uh, relative to their expectation. This is actually a really good point. We actually kind of debated ourselves whether we want to use the absolute earnings we're changing earning right now. By the way, we're using a change in earning year on year. One of the reasons why did, we did that is that although our hypothesis actually kind of somewhat neutral in terms of like probably high earnings uh, firms also have probably higher uh, job search interest or job seeker interest. However, in terms of our regression specification, we are using already firm fixed effect so that somehow actually we are taking out this cross sectional variation. So that when we split our sample, we also consistently using this earnings growth year over year, not actually because that is only the interesting variation. As you actually, Emma pointed out, maybe just the absolute still play the same role, but just our research design where we already taking out, let's say, you know, of the usually high performing firm have a more job seeker interest. That part is there, maybe some correlation we already kind of look at uh, at the same time. But when we actually do the regression specification, because we take out that part from the farm fixed effect, now we more focus on the time variation that is earnings growth over time. And then how, based on that split, what we are actually looking for here. And also like Emma, like if I go deeper a little bit of your discussion, one interesting feature we also want to understand better, right now we're actually still moving on that direction. We actually believe that there is actually some difference between the investor and job seeker. One of the things we are much more interested in and also we actually in the process of doing more analysis is that some job seekers probably not actually financial information savvy. So that maybe like a really precise, the, um, variation of the what is exactly current expectation incorporating all information 
and also what is actually relative to that information we are learning from the earnings announcement, definitely really nice test. And then we can more think about from the investor perspective. But when I think about the uh, job seeker perspective, I also want to more like uh, in the middle ground where uh, the information is easy to be perceived, even those who are not actually savvy in a uh, financial market so that we actually using some like simple earnings growth. And by the way, as a robustness test, we also did a just revenue growth and we find a qualitatively similar result here. And your second question, you know, later, if you wait, I actually go there and then discuss more about your point. Certainly, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we, if we translate uh, the finding that we just uh, saw on the figure into the regression um, analysis and also only using the one indicator variable for either earnings announcement week or earnings announcement week zero all the way to um, four weeks after earnings announcement, we find stronger effect for only those firms with a earnings growth earnings announcement, we didn't find much uh, effect for the firms with a earnings growth that is mediocre or even earnings decreasing. Okay, so, so far we've really explored whether earnings announcement are associated with a increase in job searches. And also we split it our sample into two parts, earnings announcement with earnings growth higher than the median and also lower than the median. Now let's try to understand why and what's the mechanism really play a role here. And now it's almost time to go back to group us question, but just like a wait a uh, couple of like a slide, I'll let you go there and then go back to our group us point. What is the role of media here? So mechanism analysis, based on the prior literature, especially some of the papers written by Brian Boucher, like a role of the media or overall role of the earnings announcement, we conjecture two channels, maybe more than that, but at least two channels can play a role here. There is attention and information. It would be good to define like what is really attention and information in this context. By the way, we are going to use a media coverage as a research setting. And also we somehow follow the prior literature, how we define attention and information role in this context. So attention role can be that this earnings announcement through some mediator such as media or word of mouth first grabs our attention from job seekers. However, that attention grabbing might be sometimes unassociated with any of the content of the news. In other words, job search can increase for the firm that announced their earnings regardless of that earnings is either negative or positive. On the other hand, if we think about the information role of earnings announcement, that means that at least job seekers perceive either through the tone or through some conversation, and they actually immediately understand some financial number, they actually process that information and somehow tie that to the job prospect of those employers so that that actually change their job search activity more for firms with earnings growth than for firms with, let's say, earnings decreasing. So that is the two kind of roles of earnings announcement. We try to examine those two roles or channel by using, as I mentioned, media coverage. And also I'm going to actually take a look at a job seeker level analysis for deeper understanding, again, these two channels. So in this analysis, we are going to use a labor pack to measure media coverage and first, we are take, um, using this uh, label effect data and media coverage as a control variable to understand the role of the media or overall role of the attention, because we want to uh, think about media as a mediator of earnings announcement, influencing job searches. So overall media coverage, this can be earnings announcement or other event. Now, this is the indicator variable. As you can see, the magnitude is about 2%. And then as actually Grouper mentioned, now if you think about even after controlling for this um, media coverage, we still have about 1.5% of the magnitude, but still as go back to Grouper's point, maybe when we actually only take a look at column two, comparable, or actually I can also say that, you know, media coverage probably has a little bit larger effect. When you have to think about co the media covered event, that is actually kind of larger effect uh, relative to the, um, the 
earnings announcement, just make sure that some earnings announcement also covered by the media so that the media covered earnings announcement, the job search activity probably the sum of this 1.5% plus or to 2% if on average this is actually reflecting all the events. And by the way, if you take a look at column four, uh, the, uh, if the <clears throat> earnings announcement has slightly larger effect than the media coverage. But overall, I believe that this is also indicating probably going back to Emma's point, also like a group plus point, you're definitely interested in like as a, you know, additional analysis or future research, what other events that actually firms are announcing through the AK, how they actually also associated some job search activity. Now let's go deeper into this analysis, really examine separately attention and informational role of earnings announcement. So let's actually focus on first column one and two. In column one, we split column one and two, we split the earnings announcement into earnings announcement with media coverage and earnings announcement without media coverage. So as you can see in column two, we find statistically significant larger effect relative to column one, meaning that yes, media coverage play a role. Overall, not only that, those earnings announcements drew more attention from the job seekers also get more job search activity. So that it looks like this really consistent with the attention role of earnings announcement. On the other hand, if you go to column five and six, now we actually condition are on only earnings announcement with media coverage. We now splitting our sample into those earnings announcement with media coverage already and also with earnings growth larger than the media, and also earnings announcement with the co media coverage and with earnings growth that is smaller than median earnings growth. As you can see in column two, uh, six, when firms actually announce earnings growth, which is larger than median earnings growth, you see much larger effect relative to column five. Also, this suggests that information role of earnings announcement also play in this context. So overall, the previous table and this table nicely point out that the both the information and ascension channel play a role in this context to increase job search activities around earnings announcement. Rupa? Yeah, I think this is real. This um, this is pretty close, I think, column five to like kind of this placebo type of idea, right? Um, so that, that makes a lot of sense. And I think the one addition that could help is like, yeah, the non-earnings type event with a similar level of media coverage. And I think that would kind of complete the picture. Uh, but this this provides a lot of benchmarking to, to my previous points. So that's really helpful. Yeah, thank you, actually, Grupa. And also, I really definitely want to actually go deeper that um, that kind of analysis more and more. One of the actually kind of advice I got is that probably a little bit go back to Emma's point is that when actually firms really announcing the new factory establishment like a Tesla a couple of years ago in the Nevada, they want to probably that really strong signal that you know anyone actually there working at the manufacturing industry probably wants to pay attention to when that new factory is coming in. So I'm actually with uh, you know group are you and then Emma, though like uh, as I mentioned, like at first I won't want to focus on in this study earnings announcement. And that could be a good benchmark, but also I can see that could be a really nice actually separate paper, other like AK event, important event, categorizing it, and then see also relative significance. So we did actually uh, another test, a uh, deeper understanding of the same phenomenon, these two um, channels, but using slightly different setting that is job seeker level analysis. So one step back, let's imagine this situation. If I'm an actual user and somehow let, let's say I, I hear some earnings announcement without really perceiving any information yet, I actually search for that company. And I realized that you know, gathering some information during the earnings announcement week, I see that this firm is growing like a snap. In, um, in, in, uh, during third quarter of 2020, I'm actually more interested in. Therefore, in those cases, if I'm serious, then I probably subsequently search again and again, getting more information. And at some point within month or two, I might even apply for those jobs when they also, you know, post some new uh, position or some position that I'm interested in. On the other hand, let's think about another situation where I'm a user, I'm intrigued to the company because of earnings announcement, some attention. But then when I actually take a look at really the company, 
when I process that information, I realized that the company is not really growing. Let's say recently Netflix uh, posting more um, you know, devastating earning or revenue growth so that uh, many of the investor and even workers might be disappointed. In those cases, I can imagine that you know, uh, workers might not actually subsequently continue to thirst under the um, you know, job prospect hypothesis because under the job prospect hypothesis or information role of the earnings announcement, in those cases, probably um, the workers might be more benefited to redirect their attention to other promising employers instead of the uh, firms announced like mediocre or earnings decreasing earnings announcement. So we really tested that individual level analysis. In other words, our indicator variable is whether these job seekers search for the company during the earnings announcement. And we also construct a new variable for each user, whether those users search for the same firm for the next four weeks after the earnings announcement. First of all, this positive coefficient in column one and two both indicating that there is some kind of attention story going on. In other words, regardless of that earnings news they actually encountered during the earnings announcement, they still continue to search is because maybe they hear about the company, even though you know, news is uh, negative or positive, they just like uh, you know, heard about it so that they also continue to search um, about that company. However, when you really compare the magnitude, column one and two, actually column one, four times larger than the column two. So this differential effect now is consistent with the information role of earnings announcement. In other words, when the news is positive, when there's a more chance that these workers can move to this company with maybe higher salaries or more promotion opportunities, then actually we see much more subsequent searches. And this previous test and this test really kind of coordinate uh, together to point out that the both channel attention and information playing a role in this context. Let's go to the last part of the paper, additional support for job prospect um, hypothesis. So here, actually, I'm a little bit going back to now first actually group parts point, but let's actually summarize what, I, what I'm going to do. By the way, also like later, I'm going back to Emma's point as well. So the, in this third section, we are actually trying to do additional analysis associated with job prospect hypothesis or informational role of earnings announcement. Because as an accountant, probably we are also quite interested in like how information in earnings announcement, especially financial information, play an important role guiding really job seekers toward much more uh, the bright job prospect firms. So we are going to do three different tests, survey experiment, financial information search or acquisition, and also we are connecting financial performance to future job prospects. This last is somewhat related to Emma's point. So let's actually um, think about these three tests in the context of also the job search. So far, we really focused on this initial stage where initiating the job search, which company I want to spend more time to understand their job prospect. Now, by looking at the some activities after initiating job search, I want to better understand this job prospect uh, hypothesis also a little bit tied to the real outcome, eventually how they are moving to another company. So the per first analysis, this survey experiment. Now I want to go back to Groupar's point. As Groupar mentioned, in our, in our archival setting, one of the disadvantages we have to face is that it's really hard to tie exactly to the financial information. It can be also it's related to Emma's point. It can be some other information also distributed through the um, earnings announcement event. And to us actually in the archival setting, we face some challenge that really randomizing only the financial information provision across the users. That is why we actually change our attention to different research setting. This is survey experiment. In other words, in the hypothetical setting with the a fictional company, we first provided different pieces of information across randomly selected four different groups. So let's think about first paragraph of this um, text and also control group. To the control group, we only provided this first paragraph about the next lead fictional company. And then they developed this customer relationship management software. And you know they went public about five years ago. So that's it. 
This is the control group. This is all the information we provided. Another randomly selected group, the treatment one arm, we actually provided the second paragraph. We actually say that, hey, this company recently uh, covered by the news media about the new product this firm is launching. And this um, treatment arm somewhat actually associated with probably media coverage itself, and then how much that also lead to more attention to the company and also lead to some job search regardless of any news content. Now the other two treatment arm, treatment two and three, in addition to the first two paragraphs, we are adding this last paragraph. And this is financial information that we are randomly giving. That is, in addition, the company posted its quarterly profit, which are up 15% compared to the same period last year. And for the other group, treatment three, we actually provide the same, but with actually one word different, that is which are down 15% compared to the same period last year. When you take a look at the result, this is what we found. As you can see, relative to the control group, oh, by the way, the last question after we show that information is that how likely these users are willing to apply for this fictional company next this lead and they actually indicated from the one to seven Likert scale. And there, relative to the uh, control group, we find that when the news is positive within the red box, the bottom, they are more likely to apply for, or they are more willing to apply for those jobs. On the other hand, when the news is negative, they are less willing to um, apply for that job. And somehow it's symmetric in terms of the absolute magnitude. By the way, if you actually look at the first row, neutral news, where uh, at least media covered the company, at least the magnitude is half of the positive news, although unfortunately it is not statistically significant. Overall, I think actually the lovely as a weak evidence, this is also consistent with the information and attention role. And in this test, we uh, hopefully like uh, group R and Emma, we can more like directly tie to the financial information and their decision-making. And by the way, we actually did also subsequent interview with those uh, survey participants. And we actually asked why actually you choose more or less likely to apply those firms when we actually provide the financial information. And respondents said that they expected a company with strong financial performance to either offer higher salaries or provide a lot more room to grow and also firms actually trend upward. So overall, this is actually consistent with our job prospect hypothesis, um, at least based on this a hypothetical setting. We also conducted another uh, test that is financial information search. In this analysis, we actually quite changed our research setting. That is, although we believe that probably around earnings announcement, some people go to the Edgar, especially job seeker, and also get uh, more information about the employer, probably majority of the users are investors. They actually search for the financial information around the earnings announcement. So in order to a little bit tie really financial information use of those job seekers or labor market participants, we slightly change our setting toward let's look at the event such as job posting and interview as an independent variable and take a look at in that period in specific county for specific company, whether those people actually search for the firms based on job posting information coming from the burning glass technology and also interview information from Glassdoor. And when we measure financial information search, we follow also prior literature, one of the paper by Charles Lee or also very recent paper, Bernard et al. 2020. And as I mentioned, the variation coming from company, month, and also county. And we are using about 200 uh, public firm because of the merge between the various data set and we use the sample period uh, 11 to 2016 uh, because of the data availability for financial information searches. And let's take a look at what we find in the result. As you can see, job posting in for firm in specific county and specific months are positively associated with financial information searches. And also the interview, the game, the firm in a specific county and specific months also positive associated with 
financial information searches, even after controlling for county fixed effect, month year fixed effect, and also firm fixed effect. So we believe that this is also much more direct suggestive evidence that uh, job seekers really use financial information and also consistent all the way to the initiation where maybe financial information might be useful as a financial information itself to guiding them toward more job prospective uh, employers. The another test that actually now let me go back to Emma's point is that now we want to actually take a look at one performance and the future job prospect or to future job posting. As Emma mentioned, like uh, more like a strategic use of this um, disclosure timing of the job post. And that is also somewhat related to I believe a group job market paper, like this property cost, how much actually contact they want to bury. In this case, I more actually think about from the job seeker and the firm's perspective, the consistency of each other. In other words, if the firm is growing, it's natural that firm also wants to hire more and more workers as they grow. But at the same time, that expectation is also embedded to the to workers that they want to actually pay attention to those uh, employers. In that sense, we want to actually regretting from performance on future job prospect, especially next month or month after next month from earnings announcement. And we measure job prospect uh, as three different uh, ways. We actually measure just simply number of posting or number of senior or manager position that is more related to you know, the career development. And also we also take a look at job posting with social and cognitive skill that may be related to more professional development. When you take a look at the result, we actually find that financial performance in the earnings announcement week is associated, earnings announcement month in this case, associated with the next month or the month after next month, job posting, higher job posting, and not only just job posting, job posting for uh, manager and senior position, and also job posting with cognitive and social skill. So in this sense, this is consistency. I, am I actually, I think uh, we didn't really test about the strategic disclosure and some of our analysis during the announcement, what we find is that not much actually strategic uh, disclosure of the job posting, but still in this uh, sense, they test more like a, kind of rational expectation and how firms are behaving um, in terms of like a growing their businesses at the same time, therefore hiring more workers based on the expectation. Also workers try to pay more attention to those employers. Okay. Now I have one more test and then a concluding slide. So we did actually quite a few different heterogeneous um, Heterogeneity analysis, one of them uh, especially interesting at least to us, we actually take a look at remote work policy. Because if you take a look at our sample, we also cover uh, some of the sample period with the pandemic. And by the way, we actually did also one robustness test, excluding that sample period of the pandemic, and we continue to find a uh, similar result, even excluding that pandemic period. But here we including that, and we really think about what about the uh, firms announced remote work policy. Under the labor economics um, theory, the labor market is quite localized. Therefore, I'm actually more interested in probably in the Bay Area job, like group are more interested in, in the job in, the, uh, in New York area. But when remote work policy are possible, I can now apply for the job even in New York if they allow me to work continuously in California so that the financial information might be more useful now or wide uh, range of the uh, worker when the remote work policy were implemented for those employers. So we actually interacting this earnings announcement with those firms announcing remote work policy permanently. And we find that much stronger effect for those firms consistent with the idea that now this uh, financial information more useful to wide range of the workers, not just in the area that firms may be headquartered or, or firms has their facility. Okay, you don't have any question. Now it's a um, conclusion slide. So thank you for your attention. So the, we find in this paper that we provide robust evidence that job seekers really perceive and act on the information contents of earnings announcement, as well as also attention grabbing role of earnings announcement. 
And still, given that also earnings announcement provides some information, useful information to job seekers, we believe that earnings announcement seem to guide uh, job search or job seekers, and this seems to have important implication for policymakers. Finally, not only this context, overall in the job market, we believe that financial information seems to be an important part of the kaleidoscope of information, so that more understanding of this role seems to be useful for us to understand how job market is behaving and how we can make the job market more efficient. Thanks for your attention. And if you have additional comment, please send me an email. I'm happy to communicate more. And um, your, thank you again, all of your participation. Uh, thank you very much, dear uh, Professor uh, Zhang Ho, for your contribution and, uh, and your effort. It's really an excellent presentation and uh, excellent uh, paper. Thank you very much. Uh, if anyone have any questions, you can open your mic and ask your question. And... Uh, I have just uh, one minor question. So it, it seems like uh, this is very novel research. Uh, although there is some prior literature upon this, but then um, how do the contents other than the um, greater than the median and lower than the median of the um, earnings affect the uh, job search? So for example, like what else is going on during the earnings announcements? Like for example, um, perhaps there is like a earnings announcement conference call, and then there's some, you know, sentiment analysis that could be done upon the conference calls. Um, have you considered research in that direction as well? Yeah, I'm actually really interested. Thank you, David. If I understand correctly, the uh, we are more focused on right now the, you know, a few numbers there like earnings or revenue, but I'm definitely really interested in also to go back to a little bit Emma's point that the text or other information uh, delivered to the investor or the public through the earnings announcement or earnings score can be really interesting uh, point of the research. Especially recently, there are many papers uh, out there arguing that one of the paper is written by Maureen that the bundling is much more frequent now. A lot of earnings uh, and also uh, earnings forecast, major forecasts are bundled together during the earnings announcement week. So that we actually really carefully say that this is only the earnings. We have to just say that any information, I'll go back to a little bit also my discussion with Emma, that any information uh, delivered to the earning announcement uh, period should be also contributed to what we find here. Again, actually going back to a little bit of the point that we discussed, I think you know, job seekers can be a little bit special in a sense that instead of like really fully digesting all the information, they might also want to digest the information that's more useful for them. And also information that is easy to digest and covered by sometimes actually media. So for that, and actually we focused on some of the summary measures. But go back to David, your point, one of the things that I'm really interested in want to see more is that maybe I can, uh, you know, we can do either in this test or in this uh, paper or other paper, such as, you know, the new factory establishment or new plan to investment, those type of things in the text, even actually during their next announcement, might be really useful for job seekers to pay attention to it and also use that for their decision making. So yes, I'm actually with you and that's the direction also I want to study more. Thank you very much for the kind answer and great presentation. Zheng Ho, yeah. um, I, I just want to comment, like recently you see a lot of companies making like earnings. Uh, Apple recently announced its recent quarter earnings. And with the earnings announcement, there's clear signal to the job market. For example, Tim Cook said we are continuing to hire, right? And so those are the things that I think to first get rid of, I guess, <laughs> to 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 have a cleaner setting that you know, you know it's the it's the financial number. It's not a clear signal to the job market. And for example, Netflix announced its earnings, and together with the earnings announcement, there's an announcement of uh, labor cut, right? Like there's cutting labor force and Tesla too. So those are the things that I think should be. Uh, the most direct signal to the labor market. And on top of that would be the, the financial number, if, if um, <laughs> that's my prior. Yeah, I, actually, I'm, I'm with you, like Emma, for that point. But just to make sure that like even that, like uh, that information probably 
deliver during the earnings announcement because earnings announcement is really the event that they can actually communicate all the pieces of information. And as I mentioned, I first actually wants to test the information contents of earnings announcement. So that is also the research question we are targeting to. But at the same time, as Emma, you pointed out, we also want to tie more to the financial information. Why? Because that is also you know, highly interested in as me as an accounting researcher. That is why we do a few more tests later, something like survey experimentation and also financial information, really acquisition during the job posting and interview. So that like a, the indicating the existence of that channel, but that doesn't mean that actually uh, you know, the financial information is the only information or actually the most information. But one thing actually, Emma, I want to point out is that actually that's happening um, also the, uh, th there's a paper actually look, uh, arguing that point. That is, even though firms actually saying that they are going to hire more, if their performance is not really supporting that argument, probably I'm less comfortable with actually applying for those jobs. And there is actually some term that I actually like, and not me, actually other paper, um, uh, Scott is actually, I'm citing the paper in, in my paper, show the, have this um, term phantom job posting. In other words, sometimes firms actually posting a job and then like it seems to try to hire, but behind the curtain, what's happening is that they're not really interested in hiring. They just try to see how the job market looks like and then they eventually don't hire. So in order to really distinguish those two cases, actually financial information, sales growth were high, like a strong earnings performance with the argument that they want to actually hire more might be much more stronger signal instead of like other cases. And that also a little bit consistent with when you think about what's the really value of the financial information is verifiability. When they say it, when they is it, we're much more uh, have the confidence in using that information, but that's still combination of it. So, and, and I want to actually study both at the beginning and then also pointing out that there is actually specifically financial information playing a role. No, I think that completely makes sense. And while you're talking, I actually had an idea where you talk about your survey uh, instrument. And I was thinking like you have this uh, negative news and positive news based on like the financial numbers. Um, what if you add another thing like companies earnings? forecast right like not earnings forecast like labor market forecast so um you would have like four treatment group basically one is positive earnings positive uh hiring news and uh positive earnings but negative hiring news and negative earnings positive hiring news and negative earnings and negative hiring news right and then that can potentially help you this tang in tango the the um hiring announcement versus the earnings announcement which one is the dominant factor uh, i i don't know much about earn, uh survey instruments but uh, experiments but that seems very interesting to me if i can know like what what people think uh is the most prominent signal because ultimately they're they're trying to get a probability of hiring right it is. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely that is actually one thing we want to understand better. So, as I mentioned, like when you started this study, there's no like a, you know, presumption that earnings announcement should be associated with so that we actually first start there. And then after actually kind of understanding the information content, as you mentioned, we want to understand better about what specific information content we actually started the summary measure. But as you, uh, you know, suggested, we definitely want to go further and maybe like a, even like a, what is actually more or less, but you know, again, like a you know earlier point that still I believe actually financial information has its own role and at least actually some of the uh, results suggesting. And as I mentioned, we're our research question here is not actually what is the most important. We're more actually wants to first show that the existence of that information usefulness, and then actually probably next step is that now relatively what is more important, less important. Okay, uh, Jutin, you. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi, Johan. Uh, my name is Ju Ting. I'm an accounting PhD student at Drexel University. I'm very happy to attend your presentation today. And uh, this research topic is very interesting. Here, I have a question. Since uh, your paper kind of uh, provides some evidence about how can the earnings announcement reduce the information asymmetry between the management team and job searchers. But as we know, like for the job searchers group, there are also information asymmetry between the first time job searcher and those experienced job searcher, right? So have you ever considered um, providing some additional tasks to test whether this link still, like the results still hold for the experienced job searchers? 
actually, this is really great uh, point. Uh, by the way, we're actually doing some um, like uh, additional tests right now, but like uh, along that line, but not exactly what you're suggesting, but hopefully actually some of the additional tests we are doing, someone actually, um, you know, help, you know, helping us to understand the, the, the question you're asking. So what we're doing right now is that not so much as actually more experience or less experience in terms of the job search, whether actually they have enough like financial kind of uh, skills to understand the financial information and act yes. on it. So that we, uh, you know, in our main test, we're we are not able to really identify the user because the platform is anonymous. But when you actually do this, like a job posting and then association with the job posting with the um, financial information search, we actually are able to classify job posting requiring the um, at least bachelor degree or college degree where more educated uh, people are required for those jobs or actually some jobs actually not requiring any of the uh, degree or like a lower degree uh, than actually college or bachelor. What you find is that much stronger effect when the job posting requires some kind of education so that we can assume that those people have much better idea about what they actually uh, are getting in terms of the information, we find actually larger effects so that for that and actually we have uh, some consistent result or actually some result actually associated with your question, but that's the direction mm -hmm. also we wanna do a few more tests. Just also, you know, admit that like our main data actually has some limitation. That's why we try to exploit additional data this job posting to understand better about along the line your question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. For all oh, for your contribution and your effort, it's really an excellent presentation. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, everyone joining us today. Uh, and thank you very much to, to take the time out to present to us today. It's been really appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mohamed, Joel, and all the participants. Yeah, and I hope to see you soon in Egypt. You are very, very welcome. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation.